This video is on identifying transformation of parent functions. This is video one for introducing parent functions. So we start off with a couple of definitions. Um, the first one is what a parent function actually is. It is the simplest function defining the characteristics of, the, of a family. It usually goes through the origin and can be written as f of x, g of x, h of x. The key again is how I am saying it. So f parentheses around an x is means, uh, it means function written in terms of x. So y is equal to 3x plus 2 is a equation written in terms of x because x has all the stuff being done to it. So f of x is equal to 3x plus 2 would be a function that's written in terms of x because again x is the stuff that everything is being done to. Please understand that f parentheses x is not multiplication. Uh, it, we don't ever really write multiplication that way so it shouldn't be something that you would think of but a lot of people do. So just make sure you understand that from here on out f parentheses x means the function of x or g it could be any letter um, besides you know x, y, and z which we use for variables primarily. The picture now is just a review of the different basic functions that you've been seeing so far this year. You have the constant um, horizontal line at y is equal to whatever number it goes through. Then we have linear equations that will normally start at the origin, as you can see, like I said, most parent functions start at the origin. And then as the y-intercept changes, it's changing its location um, and translating it either up or down. Quadratics are x squared and they make that u and again goes through the origin. Cubics make an s and it also goes through the origin. And um, square roots have a starting point at the origin. Again all of these can move around and translate um, so that's what we're discussing and starting to work on is based off what a parent function is what's happening to that parent function that will produce the graph that you have. Now this could be a stretch um, a compression, a reflection, or a translation, all of those things make up a, um, a transformation. So a transformation is a combination of those items. So again, um, I don't have a separate slide for that, but we'll put it here. So a transformation is a combination of stretch or compression reflection and translations all right so it's a combination of those it can be um, one thing it can be all three it can be just two of them it just needs to be a combination thereof now, when identifying a parent function from a non-parent function, you really just want to look about at what's being either um, multiplied on or added or subtracted. Because if you look again at the basic ones, they're just x. f of x equals to x. x squared. x cubed. Square root of x. So there's nothing else really being done besides maybe a exponent or a radical. Okay. So when you're looking for that, then all you have to do is just take off anything that's being added on, subtracted, or multiplied. So for A, it says g of x is equal to x plus 5. That plus 5 is what I mean by anything being added on. Therefore, the parent function to this would be g of x is equal to just x. From here, you need to think about what would be happening with this graph. Plus 5 means that we're going to take our graph and we're going to shift it. Okay, so the y-intercept now is at 0, 5. Well, if a parent function y-intercept is 0, 0, what's the change? It's on the y. Specifically, it's 5 units up. So the transformation would, uh, would be a translation 5 units up. Okay, because it does tell you to just describe the transformation. Now, the second one says g of x is equal to x minus 3 um, squared. Now, for this one, again, whatever's being added or subtracted, take away and you'll get g of x is equal to x squared. So the parent function for this one is g of x is equal to x squared. 
Next phase. What exactly is being done and how does it affect our graph? If we were to put in um, some numbers and plug them in, we could find a graph, but we may not find the graph we want. So for this, it's just key to keep in mind what's altering. The item that's being changed specifically is the x. We're taking x, whatever it is, and we're going to subtract 3. Now, we do turn around and square. But the question is, is what kind of translation does this produce? Or is it a reflection or a compression? Well, a reflection would be negatives. Um, and they're, you know, in next or directly attached to the x. So g of x is equal to negative x squared would be a reflection. g of x is equal to 2x squared would be a, um, a stretch. Okay, so those are specific. Well, x minus 3 is a little bit trickier. And graphing it may not, you know, you may not quickly see exactly what's going on. So the best way to determine this is actually to just set the stuff inside equal to 0 and solve. And you get x is equal to 3. So that means that your graph is shifting 3 to the right. So 3 to the right ends up being what this transformation is. Now it is a lot easier if you can graph these things to see the transformations. Um, but you know, unless you have a graphing calculator, that can be really time consuming. So as we progress through all the different graphs, you know, I'm going to be teaching you the little tricks to catch on uh, as just so that you can just look at it and just by looking at it you know what's going on. So this is just the beginning of this. Um, there's a lot more to it and that will be primarily done uh, either in class or through additional videos. So for the examples, I just would like you to, um, you know, give these a try to the best you can. The identity, or sorry, you need to again identify the parent function, so take off anything being added, subtracted, multiplied or divided um, to the, the x, pretty much, uh, and then try to describe what's happening. Okay, what kind of transformation do you think is going on? Um, if you're not sure, don't worry, we will go over these in class, but please at least attempt. You should be able to do A. Um, B may be a little bit more difficult, but you should definitely be able to do A. So uh, that's it. Please write down basic, or not basic, specific questions if you have anything, and we will be doing quite a bit with this in class. And that's the only video that you guys have for this um, section.